What's up, angels? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Adriana. I do. I'm just a little brown girl who does her makeup and does some random stuff while she's doing it. And if you're coming back, hi, how are you? Thank you for coming back. It means a lot. So today, that's why I get my all to my mom in the kitchen. Today we're dealing with book number two in the Wild Seasons um, trilogy. Trilogy? It's four books in, in, in the entire series. And this week we're doing Dirty Ratty Thing. Which is the story of Miss Harlow Vega and Mr. Finn Roberts. So if you, yeah, I am ready for this. So if you're ready, let's go. So just like with the first one, I will try to not give you spoilers. But I will say right now what I am doing is I will read you some quotes from the book. Not in any particular order so you can figure out, you know, you can figure out where they are and you can experience it for yourself because they are just like some of my favorite ones from the entire book because it's great and I just love it and that's what, and I'm just forewarning you now I won't give you spoilers but that is what I'm gonna give you so you you, you will forewarn so book two now Dirty Riley thing it follows a story of one of the other couples Harlow and Finn um Harlow and Finn they got married in Vegas as well they annulled their marriage the day after you know like sensible humans um then and in part of their story, which you find out in book one, me and Ansel's story, is Harlow in a champagne-induced tizzy, flies up to Vancouver Island to see Finn. They have sex for like 12 hours straight. I say straight, but you know what I mean. Um, and then they go back to their lives of just being the people who got, you know, married in Vegas. And now two of their best friends are both married. So where book one is literally written from Mia's point of view the entire way, book two is split into um, Harlow and Finn's point of view. So each chapter, it literally goes Harlow, Finn, Harlow, Finn. Um, so you kind of, you see their relationship develop in this way, instead of how book one was written, where it just literally follows Mia's point of view, really. Which I, which I think is actually pretty cool, and I think is pretty decent how they did that, actually, because it's the first time or one of the first examples you have where they didn't just where the authors christina and lauren they didn't just regurgitate what they did with the first one so the general plot of the book um so it starts with um hollow uh is in a coffee shop she's in a starbucks in san diego her and finn haven't seen each other since she flew up to vancouver island on that one very random time um and then she runs in to Finn, who is in town on business. Uh, it is actually business. I don't know why I did that. It's something sexual. It's just that he is genuinely in town on business. Uh, Hala didn't know he was going to be in town. She didn't. He didn't tell her. And neither did Oliver, who is his best friend. And they're all now like friends because, you know, Ansel and Mia are married. So they're all sort of, you know, hanging out together. So Harlow didn't know that Finn was going to be in town. So she, when she runs into him, she is getting her morning coffee after uh, a less than ideal, mediocre hookup, really. Um, and she just like, nope, that can't be Finn. It can't be him. I'm, I'm, she, she just refused to accept it. And Finn literally was like, because he, ha they all have like, I say they all have games. They have cute nicknames for each other, so Finn will always call her Ginger Snap because she is Ginger, you know, because she's half Irish. Uh, so he calls her Ginger Snap, and she was just like, "I am not in the mood to be dealing with him right now," because she was still annoyed with him because after she went up to Vancouver Island and she had to get the plane back, he didn't. Finn literally just called a cab for her to come back. So this story, so their story now, basically follows them going from being married for 12 hours to somewhere being friends to lovers to some other rant weird situation where they're kind of like friends kind of like just you know being platonic and then into way more than that the guy across the road from me is cleaning his is power washing his car so so before i get into the quotes and everything else why i like this book um and reading this one, I personally um, identified more with with Harlow in this one. I think 
with each one because i think like when you read a book you, you try to identify with the characters right and you try to identify with each person so i found harlow Hall, like much more relatable me personally just you know each of their own and what they've done with this book compared to the first one is like i said they haven't just regurgitated plots or stories or you know uh romances or dynamic they haven't done that they've made it really they made these books really funny they because you see because they're all still friends with each other like you know three boys and three girls they're still all friends with each other they still you know hang out yeah so they still all hang out with each other and everything so oliver had you know up in his new store and lola helps him out and everything so they're also friends they also get on but man what i tell you you're not ready for the finn and harlow you're not oh my god you think you you think you're ready for finn and harlow but you're not i'm just gonna just just two things i'm gonna say silk and rope bungee cord you do it that with you will you you finn and harlow are literally their dynamic finn and harlow are both alphas right harlow is she's just an alpha female she doesn't need she takes care of her own she takes care of herself she is very much the get things done type of friend in in this entire in, in, between the three she will get things done finn is the hot canadian fisherman who is always too busy at work running his family business to have time for love he's hollow more wears her heart on her sleeve and she will tell you what she needs to and she'll always be honest with you whereas finn he's much more closed off finn is much more he or as oliver says in the book the things he cares about the most or the things he has to think about the most is the thing he, he says the least about and i think that's part of the issue hollow and finn have um in that they they're two they're, they're two different people they're both alphas they don't need they don't they don't need to make anybody do anything to them and they're not they, but they needed each other like they, they they fit perfect together just the two of them this book is very aptly named when they say dirty ratty thing very aptly named very 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 much so so while my eye well while my, while my you know under eye is doing this thing i'm gonna read you some of my favorite quotes on the book and again i'm just gonna read them around in random order so you, they're not in chronological order so you don't have to worry about me spoiling anything for you really but if you don't want to hear them don't look so quote one finn roberts let up Finn Roberts, the notorious ex-husband of 12 drunken hours in Vegas, who was good with hands, lips, and body, and who made me come so many times, he told me he thought I passed out. I like to, some of these are really sweet, some of these are just filthy as hell. <laughs> Laughing, I bend, pushing the heavy terry cloth aside to kiss her cold bone. She smells like shampoo and the soft smell I can't forget, I couldn't forget in a million years. Honeysuckle and Warmstone, Harlow and mine. His gaze catches mine, and the relief in his expression makes me feel shaky and fragile, like blown glass. I've missed this. I need this. I think I need him. He sits up, kissing, kissing me wet and messy, groaning against my teeth when he's buried inside and grunts these tiny, perfect sounds of approval every time I rock forward and back, whispering like that, and ah, oh, so good, and Jesus, baby, I can't. He reaches between us, two, fi two fingers gently petting where I need him. A ragged groan tears from his throat, and I hear the tiny hiccuping sound I'm making, begging. So, <laughs> oh, this book! I swear to God, I swear, it's horrible. <sighs> All right, the last one before I get too worked up about this, and. I have to go just lay in my bed and sort myself out. Not in yet. Yeah. Go lie down. His fingers release me, but his gaze doesn't. Right now, I remember that Finn is. I remember that Finn is ten years older than me. I must look wide-eyed and naive. I wonder if he has any idea the extent of my inexperience with lovers like him. I'm going to tie you up and kiss that sweet pussy <laughs> for a while. I would hear you say my name when you come on my lips. I'm actually really kind of hot now. I just... Oh, actually, I'm really hot now. <laughs> it's one thing to read that in your head and have your own fantasies. It's another thing to read it out loud. And I know people are going to look at it. And I'm just like, huh? And the thing is, I'm 23. I'm aware. I'm allowed to read it if I want to. 
And the thing is, Finn and Harlow are just... Yeah, Finn is literally... I, I sent this to my friends and then I sent a picture of, um... Of like a guy that I thought, you know, kind of looked like him. Or it kind of reminded me of him. Um, it was this guy on that I found on TikTok, actually. And I looked at his Instagram. His name's like... His, his actual name is Thorin. So, you know, Bradley Thorin. He's, he's, on, he's on Instagram. You can find him. He's on Instagram and TikTok. And I sent them... I sent her that. And then the description of Finn. And she was like, yeah, that's your type. I even sent her all the sexy parts in the book. And she was like, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's exactly you. And I'm like, I know. The only thing is, he's not real. And then somebody said that they imagined Chris Evans being Finn. And I was like, mm, okay. Because Chris Evans as well is my type. Actually, I think he's most of the world's type, to be honest with you. Because he's Chris Evans. But yeah. That book is sexy as hell. And I've raved and raved about these books to literally everybody and anybody who will listen. I refuse to let my mum read them because I refuse to know that we wear the same thing. I just like that. Point blank, review, point blank reviews. And the thing you see with Harlow and Finn, which is again different to me and Ansel, is like I said, they're both very much alpha people, right? They are. And it's not that Finn, because Finn is how he described he will tower over me. And but he he is bigger than Harlow in every sense of the word like she's tall but he's taller and he's twice as broad as you know as she is and he gets very protective of her which is kind of cute and Harlow is very much she doesn't she won't take nonsense from everybody so the thing with both of them is Finn doesn't need to make her concede to anything he doesn't and she doesn't need to make him concede to anything either so so within their relationship with the rope and everything else because, okay, there's actually one more quote that I need that, that I need you to hear that will make you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's going to be too long to find it. But essentially, one night, you know, after Finn sort of basically ties her up and then they go at it again, she literally kind of crumples in his arms. <laughs> literally, he, she... Because, like, there's stuff going on with her mum as well um, that she hasn't told him. And how he describes it is, or Finn, how Finn describes it is just seeing a different side to Harlow Vega that nobody else has ever seen. And that he feels privileged to, you know, actually see. And then he stays a night and that's like the first time they've actually like spent a night together. That, you know, they weren't drunk. Because the only other time they did was in Vegas. And is is that point where you start to see that, see how much they actually care about each other and how much they're actually starting to fall in love with each other. And... And then obviously stuff goes down, they, and this is what I don't like with these two authors, I mean I love them because their book is great, but the only thing I don't like is how close to the end the heartbreaking and the heart-wrenching part is. And yes, Finn is 10 years older than Harlow, but she's 22, almost 23, she's a girl, she knows what she's doing, so you know, like, it's fine, it's okay. And is the fact that when they're just talking to each other and throughout it, and you, when you hear them... Like when they're also when the book is you know just narrating their part, their how they go on about finding their person, like that's like you know they're the person for each other, and it's really sweet and it makes me and it makes me happy. It really does, and I kind of re- yeah. And now I just want to move up to Canada. The one thing I've mentioned a hundred times while reading both of these books so far to on here, on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, and to anybody who will listen to me talk about it. Is how much this book makes me laugh. There have been parts where my parents have genuinely thought I was talking to somebody and laughing, but I wasn't. It was literally just me in the book, me in my mind, having fun in my bed, just imagining things. Because it's just, it's funny and then nice. And you're gonna hear a lot of noise because I'm, there's a lot of cars on my street, and I'm sorry, I can't help it. Because what they've managed to do is they've managed to write books. Or they've managed, you know, to create storylines and characters. That, it's just funny. And it's so feel good. Like, it's not just rowdy and just, you know, sex all the time. It's not. It's genuinely a story there. There is, you see things developing. You see how a relationship develops. And in all honesty, yeah. Even though this book was written when I was too little to read it. 
because if I was reading this when I was like five, this that would have been wrong. It's on so many levels. In reality, that's kind of how things sometimes work. And they're like, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said in the last one, the most unrealistic part is marrying a random stranger in Vegas and then flying off with him to Paris. That's the most unrealistic part, but meeting strangers and then becoming really good friends with them? How the hell do you think you met your best friend? You were strangers at first, weren't you? So, it's not really, you know, the most unconceivable notion in the world. And what I like about the characters is, because they've written each book for, you know, the specific couples, each one is different in their own sense, and each one has their own story, and they're not recycling things that they've used for the other ones um which i really like to be honest because they could have just gone back with the same dynamic that they did for ansel and mia and they and i have i mean i'm i've started um oh what's this one the other one i can't think what's the name of the book now ha ah, hold on <laughs> yes i haven't started lola and um oliver's one yet um but that's what i'm reading and you know, they haven't just done that because each couple is so very different. How their stories are written is also very different. Like, if you take Mia and Ansel, for instance. Mia and Ansel... Ansel is a goofy French lawyer who's part Adonis, part puppy. Finn is a... And Mia is, um... A... He's a quiet, sweet ex-ballerina who just wants to follow her dream and she just wants to dance for the rest of her life or do something in in related to dance right that's them how they how their story is written and how they interact with each other is specific to how they learn to trust each other and how their relationship grows really oh by the way in this whole thing as well as flying back to see mia and then they eventually at the end of it they're, they're, they're trying to buy a house this is what i mean like you can't read you can't read one like a random one and then go back to it. So like you can't read Harlow and Finn's story and then go and read it and Ansel and Mia's because you'll just ruin it for yourself. So that's what I mean, like you can't do it. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so their story, you know, is, focus is specific to how they get closer and how they learn to trust each other. And then whereas Harlow and Finn, they're both alphas in their own sense, but Harlow is, she's the life of the party. She's always she's always the one you know carrying on the conversation making sure everybody's okay um whereas finn finn is he's very quiet he he knows what he wants but he doesn't wear his heart on his sleeve the same way harlow does and that in a way makes their relationship work so much better because you see different sides of them like like as you read the book you'll see literally when finn says that he sees a different side of harlow that he doesn't think anybody else has seen which is true he hasn't i mean yeah, he he has he does see a side that of Harlow that nobody else has ever seen, and it's kind of cute in that way because they're like it is specific to each other and they trust each other and they just and they just end up loving each other and they just <laughs> that was oh I, I actually squeaked bloody hell well that's just how the book makes me feel man and the only reason I say I identify more with Harlow than I do Mia was because I'm not a ballerina. The stars i am a ballerina second of all i think like my best friend i think they would literally be like yeah mm -hmm, no that's you if, if they compare me to hollow yeah only things i'm not as tiny as she is i mean I, i'm short but i'm not skinny as she is but that's a different and i ain't ginger because finn calls her ginger snap which is just so cute because ansel calls ansel calls me a series which is and i just butchered that pronunciation which is basically which is cherry and french but then um and then Finn calls Harlow Ginger Snap because she's ginger. So something you literally call her ginger snap all the time or just snap and it's just, it's kind it's really cute. And I want somebody to give me a nickname. Preferably, you know, a uh, tough very good French and not French Canadian fisherman. I'll be fine. He could be a lumberjack too, that's okay. I'm I am picky. Oh wait, hold up. Hold up. There is what I need. There is one quote. It just there's just one quote I need to read to you. Hold on. It's a bit of a low one, right? I'm just gonna read it. And if my mum hears me, she's gonna she's gonna slap me. If she hears <laughs> You're thinking about how much you love me right now, aren't you? She asks. Yep. I run my palm over her hip and between her legs. She shivers as I slip my middle finger into her, slowly stroking, stroking slowly, kissing her, 
kissing his stomach i mumble fuck fuck that's hot what i look up at her i can feel my cum in you this makes her laugh you dirty dirty man but she doesn't step away this is None of those quotes I've read are in any chronological order in the book. I literally just randomly flicked and picked the ones that I really like. It's at times like these I wish I tabbed my books, but I'm not a, the kind of person who likes to tab books because that's just not how I read. Because I have to read it, process it, and then otherwise I'll just tab every single page. What? Okay, I messed up my eyeliner, but you know what? We're gonna go with that because nobody ain't gonna see anyway. Also, if anybody in my family watches this video, please don't come hurt me. I am 23. I'm allowed to read the book if I want to. So I just had to do a little change because I felt like I need to, considering what I'm like the book I'm talking about anyway. Also, this is a very cute dress. Asos had it, so we got him. So this book is by far my favorite. Purely, well, there's a couple of reasons why this one's like my favorite, right? Even though I know I haven't read the other two yet, but I know why this one will be my favorite. One is because of how relatable I personally find this. And now everybody's completely different. If you read your forum, you might relate to London and Luke, who will have nothing to do with these three anyway. You might relate to them, you might relate more to Lola, you might you might relate more to Mia, like, you might relate to one of the guys more. Hell. So, you know, each to their own. Um, so that's why I personally prefer this one as opposed to, or I, oh, this one's my favourite already. This one has a very special place in my heart, because I thought... Okay, we're gonna keep all the same momentum as we did with the first one, and it'll just and it'll just you know be the same. I laugh so much more in this one, and in my head I was going, "Yes, get it, get it," a lot more in this one. Um, and I think it's also like a, a bit of wishing and hoping that th this is how I like think I am. This is there are parts where I'm like, yeah, no, my best friend, literally my friend, my best friend Dom, he said to me, I've never met, because I had a, a moment and I was like, please don't, am, am I a good friend, my good person? He literally said to me, I've never met anybody who can walk into a room of complete strangers and walk out best friends with everybody, is how he describes me. And Miss Hollow Vega is kind of like, she, she's like that. <laughs> so, you know, there is that. And also Finn is basically my type. Finn is very much my type. And that's kind of obvious to everybody who knows me that he is ve he is very much my type. So, and I think just the way this book, because again, like I've mentioned before, they're all written differently for each for each for each couple, right? And even though it is very sexy and it is very raunchy and it is incredibly vivid, there's not too much of it in there where you think, "What the hell are you just are you just gonna keep banging the whole time and then we're not gonna get a story?" No it all has a purpose it all has a reason and you see their relationship grow you see their partnership their trust their everything you see all of that grow and develop and it, it be it's part of the plot it's part of the reason they are who they are it's part of the way the reason why they behave and do the things that they do and it's great to watch and it's great to witness but it's also so it's such a it's such a heartwarming feel-good book like there are just parts in it where there's nothing to do with the penis and vagina interacting with each other. Nothing. I will believe some of this out because I feel like people are going to watch and wonder what the hell. There's not, it's just literally friends hanging out with each other. There's literally just a group of people in their 20s and 30s just hanging out, having a laugh, having a drink, having a dance, and just existing and being happy as they are and just having fun. Which currently we can't do because we're all in a flipping panoramic people are stupid enough to not listen and then you know some countries are going anyway besides the point so yeah, it is just funny it is just things that you're like yeah this is kind of reality it, i mean it can happen it may not be everybody's reality but it's you know you can have it and there is a version of it and i'm making this a bit more deep than it needs to be because it is just a book <laughs> but i love the book i would recommend everybody go get this entire series and read it and i would recommend reading them in order and then once you've read all four, then go back and read them in whichever order you want because you already know what's going to happen anyway. But I would read them in order as they come because you don't want to ruin... Because if you read this and then you read Sweet Filthy Boy, you'd ruin everything with me and Ansel. You wouldn't have the heart attack I had. And trust me, I, I almost cried at part of this as well. I didn't even start my bed going, no. No. I'm afraid of me and I was like, bro, I can't talk right now. I can't talk right now. I, I need to finish this. 
part of me genuinely cried in it or wanting to cry anyway but anyway <laughs> that's that done yeah so as you guessed i would go read the book go get all four of them and go read them okay and also i look kind of good you know i look kind of good right now i really like that so anyway thank you for watching um you remember to like it share it subscribe share it your aunt your auntie your grandma your uncle your mommy dad your cousin the hot guy next door i don't really care who you share it to just give it to everybody you know share it and um if you enjoyed if you have any comments any feedback any questions any if you I mean if you like my makeup if you want to know anything else hit me up in the comment section and i also have an instagram page and a tiktok funnily enough and I'm actually getting really into TikTok right now, which makes me really happy, kind of. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye, angels.